So we got the STL from 3D Slicer. So let's go into Mesh Mixer and repair and adjust it. You can download it both from Mac and Windows. And it's free and it's not that big. So just download, open it up and move in the STL file. And it's pretty big as you see, 72 megabyte. So here we have it in Mesh Mixer. You can see that it's quite many triangles here, so we will need to reduce this to get down the file size. And when we have double weave, you could see that the mesh is quite dense. Uh, let's follow the steps here. So uh, there is plenty to do, and we also have the list to follow. So first thing to do here is to use the inspector to repair holes or errors, and it could look really bad. And sometimes mesh makes you crashes when you try to solve this kind of craziness. So maybe you should have saved a backup as well. We always can have the STL to go back. Here everything went well. If it did not, you could also use edit make solid as a, another possibility. Separate shells is a good choice to check that you only have one volume. In this case we only had one. Unit, the size, we need to fit it into the 3D printer. So we could make the, uh, a 3D printer visible and there is a list of different uh, 3D printers and you could make your own if you know the size of the one that you would like to use. So in this case the, the, the real life scale is not important. It's more important that it fit into the machine and it will not be super expensive. So it's all depending on your means or what, what you choose there. We accept to uh, rotate and, and position this just to, to see a little more easier if the size is uh, big enough or small enough in this case. So with units and dimension, it's really easy to make it smaller. So now we know it fits into the machine. We could move to the next step. And that would be to reduce the number of triangles. We have a huge amount. Look down in the corner there and you see it's 1.3 million and you see it's dense. So in this case, we select the whole mesh. And in this case, it's just one mesh. Maybe you have several pieces and you need to do it on each piece. So we go for reduce. And again, there is a risk for crash here. So have a backup. And I also speeded up that calculation. It takes a while to reduce and you have different possibilities I, I use the shape preserving but you could actually ask it to have a certain amount of triangles and we do the reducement there and you see the triangles is much bigger but not so we lose any information and we went from 1.3 to 300,000 triangles much better it's still good enough the quality for 3d printing we're not losing a lot of information here so check again if you, if you have several shells, but it looks good. So time to export. So we give this uh, a good name here. So mesh mixer reduced, so it's easy to recognize and we save it. And if you look into the file folder, you see the difference there. It's huge. So we're down to 16 megabyte and it's still good, much, much better to uh, send somewhere for 3D printing. Optional but recommended, at least for me, is to use NetFab. And you could actually use an uh, old one here. So follow the link here and find a super old NetFab for free. And it's very, very powerful. Uh, if you open it up, we will. you don't need to learn it. You just need to click one button here to analyze. It's just for Windows though, sorry. But uh, it's super tiny and yes, moving it in, we drag and drop and click that standard analyze. Yes, yes. So this is a 3D printable. It's just one shell, one volume, zero holes, no errors. So I know this is great. We could also check the size there, the units. So by doing that tiny little step, I'm super sure we could send it wherever we like. And there is marketplaces all over the place that you could go for or just go to the local library and 3D print it there.